head, whatever. You know, you know, but serious damage. And not, I'm not planning on coming in there and playing the whole mixed martial art game. I save that for another mixed martial art fighter. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I fight a guy with you know different skills. But this fight here, you know, I'm, I got my mind set on really, really fucking him up, man. You know, like just straight damaging. My whole training session is is based on doing damage. You know, like some guys throw punch left, right, left, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, knee, one, two, three, kick. Got time for all that. Not in this one. Not for this one. Are you are you working uh, primarily with Mike Brown for this one, or who uh, who are you doing most of your work with? I mean, for right now, I'm, I'm with Mikey until we um. I mean, normally I do ground with Malky. I do ground with Lebo. I do ground with um some of the other guys there. I was gonna start working with um with Mo with wrestling for this for the fight, but that was when I was gonna fight Thompson. Yeah. But I'm not fighting Thompson, so Mo and I will pick up our, our workout schedule after this fight. Now, you tell you, I'm just uh, ask real quick since you mentioned Thompson. Is that a fight you still want again? Yeah, I would like. I would like to. You know, yeah, I would like to run it again with him. You know, maybe go down to the UK in his neck of the woods. <laughs> you know, see what's up down there. Kim, well, we know this is an MMA fight, but you're taking it as a street fight. Like, you really want to bring it to him? I mean, for the nature of it, it's it's like it's 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 a, it's, a, it's for him to be certified. He's trying to solidify certify himself. You know, this dude called me. I just want to he want to run it with me. For the for when he stole my when he stole the whole I the whole tattoos and toenail painting and trying to act like he was me and all that shit there. I, 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 ne I never bashed this dude about that. You know, even trying to when even when he started doing the street fights, we never bashed him. Me and my me and my guy Mike, we never bashed him. We never talked shit about him. You know what I'm saying? We let him do his thing. Mm -hmm. But then when he started talking about what me, what I did and what Icy did and as if we disrespected him, like motherfucker, what the fuck you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and then we started hearing shit, more and more shit. And it was like, you know what? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to step to this dude, man. Be like, yo, what the fuck your problem is? What are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So we never got a chance to do that, by the way. And then a year went by, another year went by. Next thing we know, now this fuck motherfucker right here talking about, he wanna fight me. You know, oh, my dream fight is Kimbo Slice. I think I could do this, I could do that. I'm like, oh, wow. So now when we got a call with, 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 with Coca and those guys put this fight together, saying, hey, we got this guy to sign. I'm like, man, y'all fucking with me, man. Don't play like that, you know? Were you excited? <laughs> what? <laughs> man, I almost peed in my pants. <laughs> like a little girl, I was almost peed to tinkle a little bit. I'm like, man, you guys don't don't play like that, man. And it was like, I think we got this, we got him. Don't say nothing yet, but I think we got him. And then come to find out they had him. And I was like, oh yeah, no more shits and giggles now. Now I get a chance to really end this shit with him. What do you, you, know? th what do you think he'll do once he feels your punch for the first time? He's gonna do like he always do. He's gonna run, he gonna, I don't know what he gonna do. I don't give a fuck, but I'm gonna keep coming. I'm gonna hurt him. I have bad intentions. I don't care what, he, what he's gonna do. I'm gonna be on his ass, believe that. One of the things that he was saying when he was in here earlier is he was kind of criticizing you because he doesn't feel like you come back to the community anymore and he feels like he's representing the entire community in this, in this fight. Listen, what do you think about that? I don't give a fuck what he got to say about what he doing with the community. I'm a family man. I got a wife. I got six kids. You know what I'm saying? The goal in every kid when you're a kid is to grow up and to move out of the hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's just the goal for anybody who has an opportunity to make it on any level, from basketball to skating to fucking football playing, mm -hmm. baseball playing. Your goal is to, to make it out of, the out of the hood. That's the goal, okay? So for him to say, oh, I don't represent the hood, no fucking reason to go back down to my old neighborhood. My friends ain't down there. My true friends are successful. They have grew up and grew out of the motherfucking hood. I fucks with them on the outside of the hood. The new these the the people that's in the hood now, y'all. I know of you, but I don't fuck with you like that. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like we were buddies and fucking drinking beer and hanging out. If that's the case, I would still be in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So that ain't my thing no more. I'm, you know, I got I got I guess I got a family now. I'm a family man. I got a wife. I got a kids. My friends who are my true friends are out of the hood. So you know. do you think when he says um, that stuff about you is, is part of a jealousy a little bit because he hasn't made it up? That, that should give him more of a will to fight. 
That means he should show the fuck up and put on his best fight game and meet me on the, in the 19th, on the 19th in that cage and give me his best. If that's the case, give me your motherfucking best. See, I want to fight you at your best. I don't want no, I don't want, I don't want to be fat. You know, I want, you know, feed me a little bit. But then, you know, give me some a little something. You know, let me earn it. I want to earn mine too. But this one here, yeah, I gotta have this one. I gotta have this one. <laughs> that's what's up. What's your message to him if he's watching this? I already gave that fuck nigga a lot of message. I ain't got nothing else to say to him, pussy nigga. So you still live in the Miami area though, but just not in the same neighborhood that you grew up in. I'm in Cold Springs, motherfucker. Come on, <laughs> man. Springs. What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> I'm in the Springs, nigga. <laughs> I'm a number notch below West Palm Beach, boy. <laughs> you know, I mean, the fight game has been good to me, you know, real, real talk, though. I mean, um, I was able, like I said, to send two of my, two of my kids to college. Um, you Do know, you? yeah. Do you? At, the, at, the, at Miami? University of Miami? No, 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 no not, at, not at UM, okay. but to college. I sent two of my kids to college. Um, my, uh, my last two babies was at a Montessori for two years, you know, and now they're, you know, they're in you know, regular schools now. But, you know, I've, I've been blessed. I own my house, you know, my, I own my cars, you know, two vehicles. I've, I've been, it's, been, it's been good to me. I have, you know, a great, great team, got a good, a good manager who makes sure shit is ran right, you know, we're smart about what we're doing and what I do. You know what I'm saying? So for, for what it's worth, man, you know, if he if he's jealous, then bitch, come get it. You know what I'm saying? If you want it bad enough, come get it. See, he's already defeated himself by even being that way and saying shit like that. Like, what, what, you, what you thinking? What you, you like the people's champ or something, motherfucker? Talking about the hood, ain't by? You give a fuck about that, man? <laughs> I ain't really worrying about that. And that's where you fucking up at. You need to be concentrating on what the fuck I'm saying to you. I'm sending you messages, man. I'm sending you message after message after message. I am gonna try to fuck you up. I have the ability to do it. And that's what you need to be worrying about. You're worrying about the wrong shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna be in this dude's shit quick. And I got a short window to do it because I know the push ass refs, the refs going to be in the house. I don't want to say that because they might be listening like, oh, that motherfucker, he called us pussies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't want to say that about the refs. But respectfully, I know the refs going to try to stop it quick because we know when heavyweights, they don't want a heavyweight to get hurt too bad. That's why I got to try to do this shit quick, really quick. Split him, slice him up real quick. Break his jaw real quick. You know, and, and I'm very technical. My, my, my training is we're very technical. I'm going to tap that jaw. I'm going to split him. You know, and, and if he falls down with his arms all stiff and shit like I'm predicting he will, I'm going to go for an arm bar so quick, I'm going to try to break it before that ref pulls me off him. Because but when he's going down, I know the ref is going to try to jump in there. So I'm going to just shoot for it real quick. You know, I, I got bad intentions. I, I think about different shit to do in this fight all the time. This fight can only go one of those ways I've thought about and I have a big head, have a big brain, and I'm a deep thinker. So I've thought about hunt so far a few hundred, few thousand ways this fight can go. And if it goes any one of those ways, he's gonna be broken up. Is there anything about his game that concerns you at all? Nah, see, and, and, and that's another thing. I, I respectfully, you know, respect fighters. You know, I know some fighters come with a different style, you know, but in my mind, I always have my mind set, you know, like fighting a fight, you know, nothing you're going to do is going to hurt me. You know, whatever you do to me, I'm going to, you know, get out of it or get my way up, you know, and then it's my turn. You know, can you stop? Can you deal with my shit? Can you take my punches? Can you take my chokehold? You know. So what kind of cars are you driving now nowadays? What you got? Yeah, I got a Dodge Ram 1500. Got it customized a little yeah. bit. Check that, you know. T, is that um the fact that you're, you know, you have a nice house, you're putting your kids through college, is that, do you consider that like the most important part of your legacy and what you've done? That's what it's about. I mean, if it was up to me, I probably, I would, I would probably keep fighting. But then, you know, I, I fight for them now, you know? I fight for you knowing what I can continue to do for their future. I'm getting older, you know? Only thing I could do, like, you know, a little bit left is, you know, you know, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Amsterdam, you know, have fun and shit like that.
but these shorties, my shorties, they're gonna need a future. You know, I gotta push it aside for them now. What do you What do you want people to say about your for like a hundred years from now when everyone's all gone? What do you want people to say about Kim? I, you know, I, I never, I was never able to answer that really? question and still can't. You know, because it's too many people out there to want them to say one thing. Sure. They're gonna have a mind of their own. And it's gonna always be something said. So it's gonna be some controversial shit. Some people are always gonna say, "Oh, Kimo was this, Kimo was that." It's gonna always be some of that, and that's good. You wanna, you want them to be free with that. I don't want to say I want them to say this and put that in anybody's head. No, you speak your own mind about me. Sure. Say what you got to sure. say. Is know. there is there the same hunger now that you had then? Because obviously now you're a success. You know, you have the house, you have the cars. Is it is it the same hunger when you were trying to come up, or is it a different hunger now that you have kids? No, no, it's it's a different hunger now because when I first started in the game, it was my first three. Being now in the game, it's my last three. Right. So it's a different type of hunger, but it's still there. Fuck yeah, it's still there. <laughs> you know, because now they they're younger, and it's more of a future. Right. You know, two of my kids was born in the midst of, of me being a pro. They don't know nothing else. Right. You know, they don't know they don't know me without the beard. They don't know nothing else. Right. All they all their lives, they even know daddy's been fighting all our lives. You know, and that's all they know. Is it more of a hungry thing now? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it is. Cause it's it's um you know. It, what do you call when you gotta live up to something? Expectations. Yeah, and then little minds now, and now that one one's ten, you know, and you know, well they're both like ten, you know, that they're, they're that's all they know. Right. They don't know nothing else, you know. From when they was born, I brought them into one of the, you know, uh, when I was, you know, we was I was renting my first nice big ass house from the Mercer fight, you know, and then from there to buy my own house. You know, they, they just know a certain lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, they know a certain way of living. You know, fuck, they know the fucking cleaning lady like she's part of the family. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so that's all they know. Right. You know? And this stuff, you, you didn't have that when you were growing up. You didn't no, have any of that stuff. Nobody had no yeah. cleaning lady. Come on, man. <laughs> you, you know, how old are you? 31. You see, you don't know nothing about that. No, we didn't have no cleaning lady I'll growing have, up. I don't have one now, either. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't have no cleaning lady right. growing up. But to have a cleaning lady now, it's, like, it's an awesome thing, you know? <laughs> but no, I didn't have one. <laughs> when, you, when you look at uh, where you are now... Um, we have babysitters, you know, with right. no cleaning ladies. <laughs> is, it, is it still almost surreal to you, comparing how you grew up to, to where you're at now and, and what, you're, what you're giving your, your children, you know? I mean, um, I mean, life is what you make of it, bro. You know, and I, and I try to be, stay humble with it. You know, um, my kids are with me out in the streets, around strangers, among strangers amongst people who really feel and think like they know me and they know me well to where to the point to where their approach can be a little bit weird but you have to handle everybody a little bit differently but on the same level of a respect you know what right. i'm saying i give you that but i'm not gonna hug you and embrace you like i fucking know you for years mm -hmm. and i don't know you because i'm not gonna let you that closer to me and then i got my kids to always look out for and watch for so i'm always there's always a level of respect dealing with people and strangers. You know what I'm saying? Even people I knew from from way back when to a, a complete stranger. It's a respect thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they got love for me. I got a love for them for having a love for me for the sport. Do your, um, your smaller kids do they do they get that what you know what their dad does is different than uh, what other what other kids' dads do? Yeah, my my son, um, my daughter gets it. My two girls, they get it. My 14 year old get it. My daughter, she, like I said, she grew with it. She's the youngest. But my son, he's, um, he's 10. And he's just turned 11 this year. And he was born with autism. And the first time he really understood what was going on was my fight against James Thompson and Tank Abbott. And every white guy he saw with a beard, he would go, that's Tank Abbott, that's Tank Abbott. So I had to go through a few years of him, yeah. you know, trying to understand what was happening, what was going on. And every time him and I would wrestle and play, he would be James Thompson, you know, and then he would always want to win, you know, because if you remember the fight, the first two, the first round I had James, but the second and the third round, he, you know, kind of had me pinned down in the crucifix, which I couldn't get out of then. But then the third round, I kind of got out of it and yeah. bust his ear and KO'd him. Yeah. So, you know, my son, he was just getting to understand what was going on. So now he goes to the gym with me at American Top Team. You know, they have classic, you know, kid friendly and, 
he understands now. He's a damn great striker. You know, he has a good, you know, kick, kick fighting, you know, game. He's great on the ground. You know, he knows his jiu-jitsu. So, you know, he, he understands. He gets it now. He gets it now. You know. Is he going to fight professionally, you think? Uh, no, he, he wants to be a video game designer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he wants to merge Capcom and Napcon. He want to put those <laughs> two together, man. <laughs> he want the Avengers to fight against the Street Fighters. He wants to put those two together and, and make something, you know, and that's what he talks about. How old is he? He's 11. 11, wow. Yeah. This is a long time to uh, keep up kind of the intensity you're feeling for this fight. It was announced a long time ago. Any any worries about kind of burning out before the fight gets here? And, you know, that's a good good question that you asked him that. You know, I'm, I try not to, um, I'm trying not to peak, you know, because um, when you train every day or sometimes twice a day and you come in with that intensity, you, you have a tendency to peak without wanting to. You just will be so fucking ready to fight. But being in the fight is a couple months out. I would have I would want to train I, I, I got to train now until then until it gets closer three days a week and once when I want to go twice a week you know and every day because I, I, I got to feel that speed boom, I'm ready to go ready to go because I'm I don't want to peak right and you know my, my trainer don't want me to peak so it's like yo we just got to slow things down a little bit you know because I'm, I'll be watching Mike Brown. I was like, I don't want to hurt my little dude, man. Because he'd be like, you know, Kimbo, we just, he said, okay, let's, he said, how about if I take off the gloves? Because, you know, if he takes the gloves off, then I can't come as hard because I don't want to hurt, you know, you know, you know, you know, you're not going to hurt your guy. Not saying like Mike Brown has anything to worry about. Right. But this is his way of saying, Kimbo, tone it the fuck down, man. You know, you're coming too hard right now. You know, you're coming too hard. You're coming too fast. It's like, you got to slow it down. We just got to just keep, keep it smooth. And we're going to pick up the pace later on. But right now, you're already at full speed. You know, that's too soon, you know. And he knows. He knows. So I got to listen to him. So I have to, in between, just take a deep breath. I said, okay, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. Let me, um, let me regroup. Let me regroup. And then I said, let's talk about something, man. Just, just keep my mind off of this shit. And then we, you know, we, he worked, we, it's the mind, it's a mind thing, it's a mindset. Mike seems like he's made like a really good transition from uh, his fighting days to coaching. Do you have any insight on- Dude, what Mike Brown, he is badass. What makes him a good coach is because he was a professional fighter. This dude, you know, had the title. Yeah. You know, him and Uriah Faber had, had wars. Yeah. You know, and like fucking wars. And you know, if, if Mike was still in the game, I, he would definitely be a title holder. Definitely be a title holder if he was still in the game. But um, he he's transitioned to a coach, and he's so he's he's, he's awesome. Everyone now in the gym want you know want you know want Mikey in their corner. If you ever watch you know the the, the fights on TV, yeah. you know if you just look in the corner. He's on if, there. Yeah, you'll see him and yeah, pretty much yeah, every, time, yeah. every fucking time he's that guy now. He's that guy, and, and people know what he what he who he is and what he's worth and what he does. You know he 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 gets to the head. He gets in the head. Because the physical part can can be can be caught up to where the mind is, you know, quick. But the mind has to say, hey, you know, like if I get you an arm bar, if my mind like fuck you, I'm gonna break your arm. But if my mind is like, no, this is your guy, you don't hurt you, then I'll just have the arm bar. It's like I got you, and I'm letting you know, hey, I got you. You're gonna tap, you know, and then in your mind you're gonna be like, oh, you fucking got it. You're gonna now you're gonna struggle your way out of it, and now you're gonna end up hurting yourself. So it's all about the mind. You know, so that's why it's like, I gotta tone it down, you know. I don't wanna start peeking.